In this video, we're going to look at finding probabilities using GeoGebra. So this will help us get exact probabilities out. Um, so if we go to GeoGebra, what we'll have here is when you're on the main page, you'll want to click probability down here and probability is going to take you directly to our bell shaped curve. Um, there's this drop down menu and that's where you could find different types of curves. There's our binomial that we'll use, um, but it starts on normal, which is what we want to use. Then these different pieces is are that we can adjust our area. And as you can see, these numbers are changing down to the left here. What's changing next to X is our cutoff value, which is where basically on the number line we're landing. And then this value that's adjusting is the area. So if I spread this to the left and make a larger area, that probability is getting larger and larger. As I make it smaller, that probability gets smaller and smaller. So what we can do is if we know our cutoff values for this range that we want, we can edit these values for X. And then on this left hand side, we could find areas small. So to the left side would be less than or sometimes the wording at most is used here. So if we wanted at most one, this would match that wording. We can look between two values and then looking to the right. So that's the more than case or sometimes wording that's used here is at least. So like this would be the idea of at least negative one. So when we get into GeoGebra, you'll want to edit that mean and standard deviation if they're different from zero and one. We'll talk about in a future video when we'll use zero and one. It's a specific curve we can use sometimes, but generally with word problems, they'll tell you a mean and standard deviation. So you'll need to edit those values. Then what you'll need to do is choose which of these three scenarios are we looking at the less than case, or which is also the at most case. Are we looking between two values? Or are we looking for greater than, which is sometimes also using wording, at least. Then from there, what we can do is edit our x values. This is where we can type in our cutoff values for the range that we want to look at. And then sometimes this right hand side will be editable. Um, and this is where it's describing the area or the probability. So let's go through those examples that we use the empirical rule for. It's like we looked at finding the probability between 32 and 48. And this was with our normal curve, mean of 40, standard deviation of eight. So if we go into GeoGebra, we'll need to change our mean and standard deviation so instead of a mean of zero, we'll have a mean of 40. Instead of a standard deviation of one, standard deviation of eight. And we want to look between 32 and 48, which this program automatically goes from one standard deviation below to one standard deviation above. But we could edit those values if we needed to change them to something else. But our probability is that 0.6827, which is very close to that approximation of 68% that we got before. Then in B, we looked at the probability of being above 48. So for larger than, this is going to go to the right hand side. So we'll need to change that it shades to the right. And then right now it's starting at 32. So we just want to edit that to a 48. And just always be sure to hit enter when you're done so that it adjusts the area. That's a point. Oh, did I hit enter? There it is. That 0.843 didn't make sense because that area of saying it was much larger than what's appearing right now. 0.1587. There we go. Which is close to our 16% that we talked about. C looked at the probability of being less than or equal to 24. So with this one, we want to go with an area to the left and have that start out at 24. And then just hit enter 0.0228, which is close to that 2.5% that we talked about. 
Then D was the probability of being less than or equal to 56, which was that very large probability. And what we're going to see is a similar value to that 97.5%. We just change that to 56. There's a 97.72% chance. And then that last one that we couldn't do before because of the empirical rule, looking for less than or equal to 54, now what we can do is plug it in. So we go and just change instead of 56, we look at 54, and there's a 0 0.9599. So with this, we can type in any number we want for our cutoff values. Since we can type it in, plug in whatever we want and find the different areas. So let's practice this. This is the first one in a medical study. The population of children in Wisconsin were found to have serum cholesterol levels that were normally distributed. So that's key wording there. This tells us that we know that we have a bell-shaped curve. And then we have a mean and a standard deviation. So we're going to have this variable that's distributed normally with a mean of 1.75, standard deviation 0.3. So that's our definition for the model. And then to draw it, we draw a bell-shaped curve. And starting with the center, you just copy down the mean. And then make some marks for going maybe three standard deviations above, three standard deviations below. In fact, we could even do just two. Um, and then we're moving this distance of 0.3. So if we add 0.3, that's a 2.05. Add 0.3 again, 2.35, um, then going below 1.45 and a 1.15. So here's our definition for the model, and then we have our drawing. So a child has a cholesterol level of 2.11. So we could do is get an idea of where they're landing. They're landing about here on our number line at 2.11. And what is the percentage of children in Wisconsin who have cholesterol levels that are higher than this child's? So we want to find this area to the right to move up higher along that number line. So we're going to find this probability of our variable being larger than or equal to 2.11. And to do this, we need GeoGebra. So we go into GeoGebra. We have a new mean. That mean is 1.75. And we have a new standard deviation of 0.3. So that adjusts our number line here. So we can see our values change. And then what we want to do is find an area larger. So we need to switch into this right hand mode and edit our value to be 2.11. What I like to do with these is always draw a picture by hand first, because that can kind of get your interpretation of the wording of the problem. Then just with GeoGebra giving you the visual, double check that they match up. And this looks very close to what we drew on our paper. And that's telling us we have this 0.1151 probability. So this would mean 11.51% of children in Wisconsin have cholesterol levels higher than 2.11 milligrams per milliliter. All right. Then this last question says, find the percentage of children in Wisconsin who have cholesterol levels between 1.3 and 2.23. So kind of going to our picture, 1.3 is about here. 2.23 is maybe about here-ish. And we want to find this area in between. This should be a fairly big probability. It's covering a large section of our um, graph. So probability with a lower bound of 1.3 up to 2.23 on our curve. 
and we go to GeoGebra. We set it so it's looking between two values, and our lower bound is that 1.3, upper bound 2.23, and it's going to be a 0.8784. So there's this 87.84% chance a child has a cholesterol level between 1.3 and 2.23. So this whole case here for GeoGebra is the idea that we want to find an area given cutoff values. So the cutoff values our values for x and the area is our probability. So with all of these cases we were typing in values for x that adjusted our number line and what we were grabbing for our answers was area. What we're going to do next is switch this direction. What if we know the area but want to find the cutoff values?